everyone, it's Autumn. Today I wanted to film kind of a first impressions video on some of the things that I have recently purchased. So I actually tried filming this this morning. So now these aren't going to be like genuine, genuine first impressions of these items. I've used them once at this point, but from my experience this morning, I decided I'm gonna go ahead, refilm it using the same products, but there were a few things that I felt like I could tweak a little bit. Um, I don't have a full face of makeup um, for first impressions, but I will show you what I do have. So the first thing is this NARS foundation. This is their newer foundation. Um, it's their light reflecting foundation. Um, I also picked these up from Ulta. These are the Chanel Le Beiges and um, which it's their Le Beiges Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluids. So they had two shades and I got them both because I have to mix like I'm not this dark and I'm not this pale. So I have to mix them and I find that that's kind of across the board for me pretty much with anything with a limited shade range or any complexion products, I always have to mix because I'm kind of like, I'm not super pale, but I'm also, I wouldn't say considered, you know, like medium. So I'm used, I'm like a, I'm a light, but then they never have olive tones in the light. So I usually have to mix something that's a little bit deeper or brings in sort of like those olive-y sorts of tones. I'm a mess. So anyway, I have those. I also picked up two quads from Rowan. So one of them I used this morning. I didn't use the other. Um, this is the one I used this morning. I used two shades out of it. This is the Rowan Gold Lust palette. And these are like cream shadows, I would say. Um, except for this one doesn't feel like a cream. And then this one is in Mood Forever. And this is kind of like more, I would say like rosy sorts of cranberry tones. So I got that. I bought the new Merit lipsticks. So recently I did a video talking about Merit. I'll leave it up here if you guys are curious. Um, and Merit did send me a couple of items to do that video. I didn't get very many views on it. <laughs> so I guess maybe people weren't that interested in Merit or people assumed that it was a sponsored video since items were sent to me. Um, but in that video, I bought most of the items. They just sent a couple of items to me. I purchased some of their lipsticks. The, the shades really intrigued me and I really liked everything else that I tried from Merit. And I thought if they were going to do lipsticks, they were gonna do them well. And I got them in the shades Slip and Baby. And then I also picked this palette up a while back from uh, NARS and this is their Afterglow Cheek Palette and here it is. The reason I picked it up is because it has Exhibit A in it and I used to have Exhibit A, it got old so I had to toss it. So I kind of wanted that back in my life for sort of summer weather because I always kind of like to give myself when I'm doing like a sun-kissed look. That color is perfect for just kind of dusting over this area to look like I you know, got a little bit of a burn. And then also I had a sample here of this MAC mascara, the MAC stack. So I have that. So I'll talk about how things went this morning when I applied them and like what I'm going to be doing differently this time. So let's just go ahead and get started with prepping the face. Since I don't have like a full face of products, obviously I am gonna be using some things that I already have. Um, this first thing is the Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I've been really enjoying this lately as using it as a primer. So I'm just getting about this much. I feel like it's a good amount, but also for like sunscreen to be like super effective, like we're supposed to use like a pretty large amount of sunscreen. So I wonder if this is even enough. Um, I will put a little bit more. So like that much more and apply it. So I'm gonna really pay attention to the clock on my monitor this time because my camera shuts off after 30 minutes and I didn't even notice and it had shut off and I was like still doing stuff. Um, and it gives no warning and it's super annoying. All right, so we have that. So going into, let me pull up my sleeves here. So going into the foundation, NARS foundations on me, or just NARS in general, they tend to kind of pull yellow. Again, I'm olive. So in order to get them to match me, yellow and blue make green, right? 
a lot of people put um, like green color corrector in it, in which it will a little bit, but you have to put so much of the green to then pull other colors in that direction um, that you might as well just put a little bit of blue in there. And in, the blue works, I have found, in yellow and in orange. Um, if you mix it with yellow, it kind of goes a little bit green. And then if you mix it with like more orange, like neutral foundations, it goes a little bit like brown, but it still like dulls it down and makes it more neutral, right? This morning, I just used this on its own. It looked fine, but since I'm redoing this video, I'm gonna mix in some blue. So I'm gonna put it here on my little palette. And I'm gonna put like three pumps. That's about how much I used this morning. And I always mix in this LA Girl Pro Color um, Foundation Mixing Pigment. I had to get this off of Amazon because um, I haven't ever seen this in store at an LA Girl um, display. But I'm just gonna put like, not even like a half a pump in there to start. So you can kind of see a tiny amount. And it's brought it down a little bit. I'm gonna apply just a little bit more blue. Okay, I think that's good. So I now have, it still looks a little bit yellow, but it's like way better than what it was. I also just washed my face um, because I had this makeup on before I went to physical therapy this morning. So um, yeah, that looks slightly better. So my face is a little bit red right now. I'm just gonna kind of go in, there we go. And you can kind of see it's less yellow. So typically what I will do is because, <laughs> that's not a way a sentence goes. Typically what I do is, let's think about this. <laughs> so typically what I do when I'm shopping for foundation is I will order the shade that is around my tone, but leans more yellow. And I have to do that because I have found that they don't even start most of the time making all of foundations until they're like well into the medium shade range. So I will just mix in some blue. And as you can see, it matches my neck. So I still have more foundation. This is like way better than it was this morning. So, and it's still a little yellow, but it's definitely more olive now. Um, and people can add green in if they want, but you saw how very little of that blue that I had to add to get the color. And by the time you add in a ton of like green concealer or something like that into your foundation, it completely changes the formula. And I find that the formula for the most part does not change when I use just a little bit of the blue here. Usually when I'm reviewing a foundation though, I don't use any of that just to be careful, just in case maybe it does slightly change the foundation and I don't realize it. I don't want my review to be like skewed in any way whatsoever because I, I wanna be able to tell you what the formula is like. Thousands of people have already reviewed this foundation. Um, if you guys want me to review it, I will, but I will tell you straight up, I wore a mask to physical therapy and I did not powder after I used this foundation this morning and the foundation rubbed right off. It's a beautiful foundation, but it doesn't really like stay on the skin, but if you were to like get up close and look at my skin, you can still see my skin through it. Like you can still see my freckles, but it has evened everything out and it adds like a nice sort of like luminosity. And I think it's beautiful. Um, I don't need a foundation to be like super, super full coverage. And it, this blends with my neck seamlessly after adding in um, the blue. All right, so the next products I have here are these Chanel LeBeige's Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluids. So I saved up a ton of Ulta points. I'm gonna do like a tiny bit of each one and mix them together here on this thing. And I was saving up my points to get a Dyson. <clears throat> what is wrong with my voice? I was saving up my points to get a Dyson. And, um, I ended up not doing that because then I saw that they were coming out with a new Dyson 
And then also I was thinking to myself, between five and $600 on a product that I'm probably rarely gonna use. Um, if we're being honest here, you guys can probably tell, I don't do a whole lot with my hair. Um, okay, so I am done with my phone call. Hopefully, I hate to say hopefully my husband doesn't call back, but <laughs> I have been like interrupted like a thousand times today, whether it be my fault of like not checking how long the video has been on or somebody calling. Um, it's just been crazy. So anyway, so I have the foundation on and you can tell, if I, I don't, did I, I walked off, I think I walked off with my beauty blender I was using. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's still here. So you can tell that this tone just goes better with my neck with the blue. So, and it kind of gave me a chance to let the foundation kind of like sit on my skin um, before putting anything else on. And I think it looks really good. So we're just gonna go ahead and hop in. Oh, I had pumped out some of this. So we'll use some of this then. Hopefully it's not dried on here now. That's what I was in the middle of doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go in this brush, which is the Jessup 110 Face Shape, which cracks me up because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a dupe for the Zoeva 110 Face Shape. So. I used that one earlier this morning to do this. Oh yeah, this had already started like setting on my thing. Anyway, I'm mixing these together and getting them worked in to this brush. It's a very thin formula. Yeah, it still feels thin on the skin. I was afraid that it, by sitting there for like a half hour that it was going to solidify, but it looks okay. So I'm just gonna kind of run this over the high points of the face, across the nose, like the areas that I want to glow. Oh my gosh, doesn't that look so good? I wish they had a shade between those two, but I mean, I'm okay mixing them. Just if I wanted to travel with them, I would then have to like obviously take two um, or pump them into something else. Look how pretty, and this is so light. So this formula is almost water-like and it's lighter than say the Becca um, liquid skin perfectors and it's lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury one. It's lighter than the Auric. It's just a super light watery formula, but it adds like a beautiful glow. So glad to have that. <laughs> and then so now I wanna go in with some contour. I don't have, well, not even contour, like bronzer. I didn't buy a new one, but I'm gonna use this NARS Laguna the cream version. This came out, I believe, last summer. And here's the thing. I don't I don't think it's still available. I hope they bring it back. But there's also something to be said for like actually using this type of makeup after it's available. So obviously people bought it. And if you're still incorporating it in looks, that reminds me like, oh my gosh, yeah, I have that. Let me bring it out. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I'll do for you if you happen to not have this. I will link below some similar items for you. I find a lot of the time that when, and it's kind of weird when people are like putting up videos because they're obviously trying to make money off of the products that they're talking about. And you can't really make money off of a product that people can no longer buy but very rarely do I come across a product that can't be duplicated, that doesn't have something out, there's like not something similar out there, right? I mean, there are products out there that are just really great and they may work for you as an individual really well. Um, but for the most part, like there's gonna be similar products out there even if something is discontinued. Um, and then also, it kind of shows me when people only want to talk about what people can buy. Like, oh, you're just trying to make money. <laughs> um, and because they, they link the products and you can link and have monetized links. My links are still going to be monetized for the similar products. Um, but you don't have to buy from them. And that's normally why I put on the screen 
and tell you guys what the products are as I'm using them. And you can just kind of look them up yourself. I put links down below for your convenience if you don't want to have to look them up or find them. Um, but I'm not affiliated with these companies. I just use monetized links. And um, anybody can get monetized links, by the way, if you have any sort of platform. You just apply for it through, I think, Like to Know It and Magic Links. Those are the two companies that I tend to use. So, um, you know, they partner with the companies, but the companies have no idea who you are. And sometimes that's when it's good having a middleman, just because like, I feel like people still know that you love the product and it's not an association, association with the actual company, right? But it can also get frustrating when people are using any type of monetized link or using anything like that because they want you so badly to go click on that link so that their channel is supported, right? And I was on Instagram the other day. I'm going to go in with this Kosas concealer. Again, it's not new. Um, I probably should have done this before. I'm gonna put a little bit on the palette though and maybe mix in a little bit of blue because again, it goes really yellow. So there it is. So anyway, I was on Instagram the other day watching a makeup artist use a couple of different products and one of the products looked familiar to me but I wasn't quite sure of the shade because she didn't specify in the reel or you know the video that she was doing. And so I just comment and I was like, Hey, is that, um, which it was a Chanel product. It was their ball, like their balm essential. I have one, don't I? Yes. It was this, but it was like in a more rosy sort of tone. And so I asked her, I was like, you know, hey, is that this, you know, in this shade? And instead of just saying yes or no, or putting the shade name there, she goes on this whole thing and says, you know, if you follow my link tree, like, cause she has a link tree in the bio. So you have to go into the bio, then go into the link tree and then choose what reel you think it is because she doesn't exactly tell you. So you kind of have to guess based off the reel what it is. And then you can find what the product is there. That's a lot of steps. And she had to explain to me all of the steps to take in order to get to my answer, which it was a paragraph when she could have just said yes or no, and then told me, and if you would like to support my channel, this is how you can get to my link, right? Instead though, it just really annoyed me. <laughs> and I understand people are trying, like they're trying to like make their money, right? Like times are hard, let's girl make your money. But I think though that withholding information unless people use your links is kind of gross. Like, I, it just feels a little bit gross to me. So normally when I do a video and I'm talking about different products, not only do I tell you what they are as I'm using them, which that creator did not do, I usually also put something on the screen if you want to look it up. And then I also put what it is in the description box plus the link, right? So there are three times right there where I tell you what the product is to where if you want to look it up on your own and not use my links, you can do so. Like I'm not forcing anybody to follow my links and that may not be smart of me as a businesswoman, um, but I feel like as a human being <laughs> and just like being courteous to people, um, I feel like that's the smart way to go about it, right? Um, because at the end of the day, once people start picking up on like, the fact that like, you're kind of like, you know, being a little too like, excited about those links and not excited about just sharing good products overall with people who are watching you, it feels gross. Not to mention, so this person I'm talking about that's a makeup artist happens to have their own brand. Um, and they use like one of their products in the video, right? 
and it must be like a newer product or something because then somebody else that is a known person who I haven't seen any videos from recently, but they're a known person. I think still on Instagram, they do makeup, but they used to be a really big YouTuber. They're commenting and they're like, oh my gosh, is that a new XYZ? I don't want to give away who this is because like I'm not looking for drama, which I don't even think I would find drama through this because my channel is so small. But anyway, they're like, oh my gosh, is that XYZ? She tells that person what it is. And then also she sends like a message, like she tags her assistant in that message and says, hey, send one out to this person, right? So the little bottom feeder um, that I am, I have to go through and like waste probably five minutes of my time searching through all your links and all your posts to find out a shade of a product. Whereas in somebody who has a platform that like you know about, you're all of a sudden like sending them stuff, <laughs> which fine, like that's great. But how that looks to me is like, I'm clearly not as important as that other person, right? My time is not important as that other person's. So that whole sort of thing just feels gross to me. Um, I'm just still applying concealer on the spots and things. So I don't know, tell me guys what you guys think about this. Like, like I'm, clearly I understand why this person is doing it, right? Like you're, if you give out all the, if there is a way to monetize something, obviously you should, right? Because like, make your money, honey. But at the same time, there being a double standard, depending on who asks you, is super annoying. Um, so I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. So I think my complexion's looking really good. I'm, and I, so I've already done my bronzer, done all that. I wanna go in now and do my eyebrows. And I don't know what I did, here it is. Do I need to sharpen this at this point? I think I do. So I was gonna film a drugstore video, which I filmed part of it, but um, I went around, because I wanna do like a drugstore product where I talk about products that perform like luxury. And I already have some in mind, but there were some categories that I didn't have like any specific products that I thought really performed like luxury, like to include in the video. So I kind of went like on a little adventure the other day. Um, and that's how you can tell like, I'm definitely like a white lady is that I'm calling like going to the drugstore an adventure. <laughs> but I, I went on a little outing the other day and I was vlogging it and, or I was trying to vlog it anyway. And I was, I went to Walmart, CVS, Rite Aid and Target. And I found that in Walmart and CVS, I am followed around in there like a criminal. Uh, Rite Aid, I am not. And Target, I was left alone. But I was followed around like a criminal in those two places, especially Walmart. Like Walmart had the cameras up um, in the aisles had like four employees between like, you know, the few beauty aisles that there are. They're constantly asking me what I need, if I have any questions, stuff like that. It's like the type of attention you get in a Sephora when you're buying a high-end product. Um, but in Sephora, like I can kind of do like, give them benefit of the doubt and be like, well, maybe they're not trying to just prevent stealing in here. Maybe they just want to educate you on the products since they do cost money and they don't want you to return it, right? So I just felt super uncomfortable in Walmart and I felt like I could not like vlog it because obviously you, you can't film and like get employees who don't want to be filmed in your video. So I couldn't even film in there, um, which I didn't ask them if they wanted to be filmed. I'm just going to go ahead and assume they don't want to be filmed since they're following me around like I'm a criminal. This is a colored brow gel, but that's fine. So... I was a little bit discouraged by that. And then I also got to noticing when I was 
looking around for some really cool drugstore products, maybe that I hadn't tried or that looked really promising. I've tried almost everything at the drugstore. The stuff that's kind of new that I haven't tried, I could kind of see the formulas and stuff and that wasn't something that I think would perform like luxury. I mean, I could be wrong because I didn't try it. Um, and I was just not super impressed. And at the end of the day, after going to those four stores, I it still ended up spending about $300. I came home, started to film to get ready with me, and then I my like camera cut out, a battery died, somebody called me, and because um, I was just going to do that and like try out some of these products. And the majority of the products were disappointing in one way or another. And I've come to find that about luxury products, yes, the packaging is nicer, but what makes luxury luxury to me is the, the lighter, thinner formulas that are like buildable and still look like skin. And then just the color ranges, not only like having a wide color range, but having like nuanced colors to where, you know, you don't, it's not just plain pink and then like coral berry. Like those are usually like, you'll always get those blushes, but it's, they don't have like any nuance to them, right? So that's pretty much what, luxury makeup is, is yeah, you're paying more, but you're paying for the ability to have shades and textures that look good on your skin. So anyway, um, enough with that rant. It, I don't even know if that video will go up. I'm still going to put up the video of the products that do perform like luxury or that I think are really great. Uh, but I'm probably not even going to end up having a full face of those products because I just had such a hard time finding products that I felt really performed well, um, really performed like luxury, you know, all that good stuff. And I'm not saying there's not good stuff at the drugstore, but you have to have a specific skin tone for that stuff to be good, right? Um, so I don't know, I don't have that skin tone. So anyway, let's try some Rowan Beauty eyeshadows. And I'm acting like let's try like I haven't already you know, use these earlier today when I tried to film this video. So I think I still want to go into this one and do the same thing I did this morning because I think it looked good. Um, but now since I'm not going to physical therapy, I may add on like a little bit more drama. So this is the Gold Lust and I'm going in with the shade Bon Bon, I'm assuming. It's hard to tell when they put the shade names on the back because you don't know exactly like what they are based on the positioning because it could be turned any way. And um, none of these shades like really scream to me what they are. So we've got Bon Bon, Safari, Bougie, and Voila. So... I am assuming that this is Bon Bon because I would assume that Voila would be the glitter shade, right? So, anywho, I can tell you from this morning that these crease, but look how beautiful this is on my eyelid. So pretty. The fact, like the way they, these go on that are not the glitter ones, they actually do remind me of a drugstore product, which is the, but it's those Revlon like cream shadow quads that are long. Um, I'll have it here on the screen. It reminds me of that. The one that I got does not have any glitter in it. So it's kind of closer to the texture of the other ones because those also crease, but they look very similar. I am gonna go in with a brush on this shade right here and work it under the lower lash line. I am in the habit of tapping out my shadows and I literally just tried to tap a cream shadow. Oh, that looks good. Maybe a little bit too much. Maybe I got a little too overzealous. So this is what I did this morning. This is all I did. It was pretty much just this and then some mascara. It looked great. I think I may go in with a glitter shade. 
Um, but maybe I'll try one from the other palette because I haven't even touched the other palette yet. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in with this other palette and I wanna kinda go in with this shade, which is really interesting. It appears to have like some silver and purple glitter in it and it's a taupe shade. So I don't know if it's gonna pick up, if you can see the colors of glitter. I can hear the birds chirping outside. Spring is coming. Okay, so this one does seem still creamy, but I don't think the one in the other palette was also creamy. Maybe they're all creams, I don't know. I'm just gonna tap this over the center of the lid. Ooh, I like that. Okay, this is really pretty. I was a little bit nervous. I thought it might be like a little too glittery, but it honestly just looks like a wet eyelid. Okay, I like it. I know it's gonna crease, but I like it. All right, so let's go in with the NARS face palette. So. I repurchased this, like I said, because of this shade. Um, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start out like I did this morning. <laughs> like I don't even know why I'm like talking, like I don't know what I'm gonna use. Like, mm, let me think, like I did it this morning. So I'm gonna go in with this brush. You can kind of still see some of it on here from this morning. This is the Refer 05. I'm going into this shade, which is, um, I think, yeah. Liberté, which I'm pretty sure they do individually. So I will link the individual shade and um, as well as this palette, if this palette is available. But this color just really livens up my skin. So good. Okay. So I'm gonna go in with this on a fan brush, just get a little bit of exhibit A here. And then I'm just gonna go over the areas again where you get a little extra sun. And it kind of gives that sunburnt effect. And then just over the bridge of the nose. So I'm not going too heavy with this. And you can even like put it in the brow a little bit. And then just kind of blend. And so it doesn't look like I just put a line on my face. It just looks like I've gotten a little extra sun there. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this blush brush and just lightly with this highlighting shade, which the highlighting shade is called Savage. And no, it's not. Breathless. Okay, anyway, it seems to have like a very light, like peachy sort of effect to it. And I'm gonna just put that right where I just put exhibit A and that, but kind of blend it through the blush as well to kind of just give me like that sweaty cheek effect. Look how pretty. This is a blush palette that I will probably travel with this summer. So as many of you know, as I <clears throat> am in the army band and we do summer tours and I travel for a lot of the summer, this is definitely something I am going to take with me. So now we're just going to go in with this mascara from MAC. So I used it this morning and I was a little bit of afraid because of this photo. The lashes look clumpy. And I'm gonna tell you, if you only put one coat, they look perfectly natural and they're beautiful. You go in to apply a second coat, it is gonna start looking clumpy, just like in the photo. I don't like clumpy lashes. So I'm just gonna curl my lashes and then put a quick coat through them. I'll zoom you in. You can already see the eyeshadow like, here we go. You can already see the eyeshadow creasing quite a bit. Again, I don't really mind. Um, my eyes are hardly ever closed so much to the point to where there's not a slight hood to where you would even be able to see that. Um, so it's not really that big of a deal. Like you're not really gonna notice unless you're like taking a nap and somebody like walks up on you and sees it. Yeah, 
So that's all I'm gonna do. I think it looks so good, like one coat. It's beautiful. And I don't even think I mentioned because I was just looking at my brows. I think I was on a weird rant when I was talking about the eyebrow. So I'm gonna show you the pencil I used here. Yeah, I went on the weird drugstore rant. Um, I got that brow pencil while I was um, doing my little drugstore extravaganza around town. So I really like it because of the shade. Most drugstore eyebrow pencils tend to go really warm or like orange on me. And that one almost seems to have like a green tint to it to where it marries together the brows in my skin so it's not obvious. And it also has like a slightly like pomade type texture and it's not super dry. And I do like that. I think you would get away with not using a uh, brow gel with it. But anyway, I used this Tattoo Studio and I got the shade Soft Brown, which they have a lot of things from Tattoo Studio, but this is just their long wear brow pencil. Um, so I think shade wise, this is the best for me at the drugstore because again, I tried to buy a ton and they all like went super orange on me. Um, when I was looking for something. Yeah, but I think this looks really natural. All right, let's zoom out and try the lipsticks. <laughs> try the lipsticks. I literally wore one this morning. Oh, I also want to pull out... I bought a Charlotte Tilbury lip pencil that I thought would be a good dupe for a lip pencil that was discontinued forever ago. Um, by Too Faced, it was my favorite lip pencil. It was the perfect nude. And then I saved it. I have it around here somewhere. I'll talk about it some other time. But I saved it like a little tiny nub of it so that I could go somewhere and try to find a dupe for it. I thought this might be a dupe for it um, based off of some videos I watched recently. I think um, I forget her name, but I don't watch a ton of her videos. I'll have her here on the screen. Anyway, she was using this lip pencil and it looked like it was an exact dupe for the one that got discontinued. Anyway, this is the iconic nude lip cheat from Charlotte Tilbury. I have pillow talk and that one's like way too pink and I was looking for something a little like more brown nude, gray nude pink. And um, that's the way it looked in her video, but I will tell you that this is more brown than the Too Faced. So just by looking at it, like I can just tell, and you can probably tell, it's more brown. So let's try it out. I still think it's nice. Did I, was I bent down the entire time? I do this thing where I slouch and bend down and then you can't see anything. So, so sorry about that. <laughs> but if I pull, hold up a mirror up above, then you can kind of see a little bit better. So I've outlined. I mean, just kind of try to, this one seems more dry than my pillow talk. I don't know if it's older or what, or maybe cause it's new. I don't, I have no idea, but my regular pillow talk that I have here in, yeah, it's in pillow talk. My regular, what do they call it? Yeah. Lip cheat. They're lip cheats. Okay. You can see it's more pink but it's also creamier. Like if I were to, that's creamy. This one, yeah, it was a little bit harder. It's like, let, I don't know. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. So let's go in with one of these lipsticks. I bought the shades Slip and Baby. They're like the two lightest shades. I'm not much of a lipstick person. Um, let's see what would go best with this lip liner and my look. And I just pulled off the shade. So now I don't know which one's, I'm assuming that Slip is this color and Baby is the more pinky one. So, hmm, let's, let's go darker. That's, um, 
Okay, so we're gonna try slim. And while this packaging is beautiful, if you do have more than one and you accidentally switch up the lids, then you're not gonna know the shade, um, which most people are not in this position to where they're taking off multiple lids at once. So that's kind of a, a silly complaint. And I can tell you from this morning, I believe I used baby this morning though. These just look like my lips. They feel good. And I'm totally not a lipstick person, but I love both of these and it makes me like want to get more colors. But then I looked at the other colors and they're not really anything that I like I would typically go for. So I probably shouldn't get more colors. Hmm. I don't have any tissue in here, so I'm going to just kiss this on the back of my hand for like a blotting effect. All right, so I think that the makeup's done. I don't really need to do anything else. I'm gonna go do my hair so you see what it looks like with like somebody who has their hair done and not just like my George Washington ponytail and I'm gonna be right back. All right, so I'm back and my hair looks somewhat normal. I just wanna go through, talk about all of the newish products that I used and um, tell you like what my first impressions and my thoughts are. So starting off with the foundation. I really liked it, but I just wish that NARS would put more olive tones in the lighter side of their foundation. But across the board, NARS typically goes like neutral, which is more orange toned to yellow toned. Um, and I also find with NARS foundation, so I always use the foundation like shade finder wherever I'm buying my NARS foundations, whether that be Ulta or Sephora. And then you, you go down the list and you put in um, shades of things that match you and then they tell you what the best match for you is. And I just want to point out that I've done that with all three of the NARS foundations that I own. Let me find the other one. Three shades from NARS here. I have Fiji, which is light five. I have Doville, which is light four. And I have Gobi, which is light three. Um, and I'm, the tones are all a little bit different. Like these two definitely, I would say go more yellow while this one goes a little bit more orange. Um, and I don't know if in their shade range, if there's like a disc discrepancy between, cause I don't have like two gobies or, you know, two of each one. So I don't know if when I put in the foundations that match me, if the shades aren't exactly what you would think they would be from like each formula or what the deal is. So I just kind of want to point that out a little bit that if you use those shade matcher things, it's not giving you the close, it's not giving you an exact match for what you say matches your skin. It's giving you like maybe the closest. And by giving you the closest, you could come out with three different shades, if that makes sense, um, depending on which site you're going to to match you. So, um, so yeah, that's all I guess I have to say about that. <laughs> all right, so then moving on to these Chanel Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluids, kind of the same thing. Like I have to mix to make it work. I have, only I'm mixing them together, but I love this formula. It's really light and it kind of gives your skin just like a beautiful, healthy gloss. Um, I will say that if you were putting on like a thicker foundation, say you use a powder foundation or a full coverage foundation, anything like that, I'm pretty sure since this is a more watery formula, it's gonna pick up your foundation. Um, but since I typically sheer out my foundations or I wear really um, light coverage foundations, even if it is picking up the foundation, I don't really notice. And this isn't really an area to where I really need the coverage anyway. Um, so I think it turned out really seamless and beautiful. And I'm really loving these. Um, I'm just reviewing the stuff that's newer to me. Um, not the things that I supplemented with, by the way. So this Afterglow Cheek Palette from NARS. So this morning when I filmed, I noticed that I had only swatched these and not used them. And I had this for a couple of months and I honestly just got it for this, but I love all the shades in there. If you think about that, the, these three shades here 
are typically the shades that your skin kind of turns when you get a little too much sun. You kind of get that um, sort of purpley tone. This right here is just like a beautiful sort of rosy coral. Um, like it's, it's, it's a warm rose, I guess I would say. Like they probably would describe it a different way, but it's definitely a warm pink. It's, yeah, it's still pink, but yeah, it's super warm. Um, and then you have Exhibit A, which is, it's a very warm, almost like orange toned red. So these are pretty much the way your skin goes. You can mix them together, whatever, when you get a sunburn. So I'm going to mix them. I'm putting them on the back of my hand here. So here's all three of them kind of mixed together. And especially with the purple having a little bit of sheen, I didn't use the purple today, but it really would give like that sort of sunburn look. Then you have this, which is a very subdued blush. Perfect. I've only swatched. I haven't used this on my skin. Um, so I don't know how that would work with all of those, but maybe that's more for your deeper skin. So here it is like spread out like that might be a little bit deep or it could go really well over the bronzing areas. Use it as a bronzer. I, I just look at this palette and I think beautiful sun kissed skin and I really like the highlight as well. A beautiful sort of peachy uh, highlight. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be traveling with it. Absolutely love that. Then going into these shadows, I still don't know what to think about them because they're fairly expensive. They remind me a lot of those old Revlon cream shadow palettes as far as the texture. I think the colors here are obviously more nuanced um, than the Revlon ones. They are really pretty. I love my eye look. So here's all of them. Um, and I wasn't sure because this one I kind of felt across the top because I just felt the glitter. It didn't feel like a cream. That's interesting that there's like creams with the powders in the palette. But you can obviously tell that these three are cream and then that is a powder. In which putting that powder over the cream might actually prevent from it creasing like it is but I didn't use that. And so let me try the formula. I'm curious about this one now. That's a cream, cream. Okay, all of these are cream in this one. So that's really interesting. I'll have to put what the website says up on the screen. So I don't know. I just did random ones. The shadows are beautiful. Okay, so the mascara. You build up this mascara and it's too much. I didn't like the way it looked this morning if I got too much on, but I actually really love how natural, like I guess they don't look natural, but like my lashes look really good right now. Um, so I like that. Um, the lipsticks. I love the formula. It's like your standard cream lipstick, but it has like a little bit of like a It's not super creamy, super slidey. It kind of sticks where you want it to. It's sheer enough to show some of your natural color through, which makes the colors more forgiving. And the colors themselves are more like nuanced. It's not just like a straight up nude um, and a straight up brown. Like you can see here, there's like dimension and like nuance to the colors. I would say that this um, sort of rosy pink color here it has a touch of gray to it, um, which is really flattering to me. And then this, I would say almost has like a bit of like mustard, like, like a yellow, like mustard warmth to it. Like you can't really tell, but it's like a nice, beautiful sort of burnt look like a burnt, not burnt orange, but it's like really light. I don't know. These colors just work really well for me, which makes me want to try the other colors, but I'm just going to trust my gut that when I went to buy them, that I just chose the two best colors for myself and then just not buy any more. Um, and then I mentioned why I like this Maybelline brow pencil that I got the other day. And that is because of the shade. It just blends in perfectly with 
my brows. See how it kind of has like a green tone? And if I find another, let me see if I can find like a, another drugstore kind of pencil here. Here we go. This is the NYX pencil in taupe. So you would expect taupe to be a little bit more on the cool side. Um, and so I'm gonna swatch taupe next to it. There's taupe. Do you see how like taupe is like a little bit like more warm brown and then this kind of leans green? Just that subtle nuance. They look pretty close still in color, but yeah, it just looks so much better on my eyebrows. Um, I've tried to use this taupe a couple times and it's just super noticeable. All right, so those are all the products. I'm super excited that I loved them all. That's very rare for me. I sometimes feel like I do these videos and it's almost like I just complain about every single product. And the reason it may come across that way is because I'm very passionate about the fact that most people are the average consumer. I consider myself to be the average consumer, although I might be consuming a little bit more just because I'm putting up videos. But I'm spending this money out of my pocket. This is my hard earned money and I want products to perform a certain way. I also expect companies to live up to their claims. Um, and so, and I also expect marketing, whether it be from the companies themselves or the influencers that they're paying, I, I don't want them to promise miracles or anything like that. I just want them to be honest about the formula and how it performs um, because it almost comes across to me like they're snake oil salesmen. Like they're telling you it's going to do something and then it doesn't. And I understand the difference in formulas and how some people may like a certain product and other people may not. But I think that if you're honest about your formula up front and you're not making any false claims, the people who are gonna like that formula are more likely to buy it as opposed to people just never trusting you anymore ever again because you have let them down so many times. So I think that's sometimes why I'm a little bit more hard on products because I know that people are spending their money on it. Because there are some people that I watch and I still enjoy watching their videos, but like, come on, you cannot like every single product, right? <laughs> like, you just can't. So anyway, tangent over, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.